Right, welcome back to another video in our building your own version of Airbnb series. Now, we've put together more or less all of our core functionality, but there's a few other bits and pieces we need to put together just to make this app really work and look good. Now, the most obvious part of that is we're going to have to go ahead and create um, a way for, for hosts to approve and deny bookings. And um, I'm going to do that by coming down to the second tab on the navigation screen here. I'm going to hit add action and I'm immediately going to go and create a new screen. I'll call that uh, my bookings. And uh, if I scroll down here, a download's got this really cool, um, it's called list by status, really, really cool like template page that will let you have multiple lists under multiple headings. So if I hit create screen, now of course, as ever, uh, it's going to teleport up to the top of the page. So I'm going to have to scroll out and go find it. There it's there. I'm just going to drag that all the way down here. We'll put it underneath this time. Let's put that there. And if we scroll down a little bit. There you go. Don't really need to line it up. I'm just quite particular that way. So as you can see, it's basically got status one and then a list and then status two. So what we could do here is we could call this, um, a, you know, pending uh, bookings. And we could call this something like, uh, you know, declined bookings. Um, the various other ways you can put it. I mean, you could also put, you could call this one uh, pending bookings here. And you could call this one uh, upcoming bookings. And, you know, it's always important to think about uh, your UX. You know, um, if this was a real app, you probably want to put upcoming at the bottom and then put pending at the top so that your person knows um, exactly, you know, what it is they've got to deal with first. So actually, you might want to do it like this. Sorry, I'm chopping and changing a wee bit just when I'm thinking out loud there. But this way, the, the host is going to know what deal, what bookings have got to deal with uh, first and foremost. And we're going to say this is a list of, um, it's a list of stays. And it's filtered by, uh, it's all stays. Well, it's, it's all stays, but um, we want to filter that by, uh, so... We've done logged in users, apartments, stays. This will essentially filter it by stays which belong to apartments which belong to this logged in user. And we can filter that further because this is only our pending bookings. So we want to say where declined is false. And we also want to say where confirmed is false. So if, if confirmed is false and uh, declined is false, then the booking is currently pending a decision from the host. So we can come in here, edit a few wee details about this. Um, uh, let's just put, for example, the stay's beginning date. And we'll put that to the uh, end date. And we could put, we could even put like a wee word in front of that. Uh, oops, so we can go, uh, you know, requested. And one of the things you can do here, just to play around with data and make it look good, you know, we can do it with a subtitle, um, we put in the apartment name, things like that. But one of the things that you could do is for the left section with the avatar images, you could go to the database, you could grab the current stays guest and put their profile photo in there. And that's just a way that the the um, the host, I keep going to say the landlord, but the host, it's a way that the host can come in um, and just kind of, you know, see the people that they're, that who are actually requesting this. And then similarly, we're going to just delete this list, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to hit Control c Control v paste it, drag the second one down. I'm going to take this action button and delete it with my delete key. Um, and the reason I just uh, copy and pasted it is because I broadly want the same look uh, here. Maybe move this up slightly, uh, move that there. I want the same look um, with the exception of these ones are all going to be declined as set to false, but confirmed as set to true. So these are the ones that we've not declined, we have confirmed, these are the upcoming bookings. In theory, you could also add in um, another list or another tab that says declined bookings if you wanted to record them. Um, I'm not going to bother with that in this particular video, but you could absolutely do that. Um, and so, only other thing left really to put on this page is a little, uh, oops, take of course, drag it down. Uh, is just a little uh, navigation bar down here. Nice and easy. And all we're going to do here is change the active tab. So now we're on bookings, so that becomes active tab. And of course, if the user clicks the first tab, we want them to go back to the 
host home screen. So we've got that. Well, now we need to go and make the detail of it. So what happens when uh, a host clicks onto this list? So this is a list of bookings that we want them to confirm or deny. So we now need to, anytime they click on one of those particular listings, we now need to bring them to um, a booking approval screen. So we'll hit at bar. And of course, as ever, Adalo has thrown it up here somewhere. There we go, booking approval. It's going to send over the current stay, so we'll grab this, we'll bring it down. Uh, sorry, I'm not zoomed out enough, so I'm going to have to kind of move slightly. So we'll bring that down there. And I also don't have a mouse, so it's very, very slow for me to move things. Apologies, I know it's a pain. Um, so there we go. And what I'm going to do here is just add in uh, a few details for the host to make their decision. So we're going to say requested dates start end. In the start, I'm going to, of course, put the uh, the beginning date. And I'm going to hit this little um, a pen, and I'm going to change exactly what's shown up. So I want this date to show up. Uh, and let me just do the same here. So I'm going to pick current date, end date. And when I say this date, sorry, I mean the format. I want this format here to show. That's something that's worth just double checking on anywhere else you've used it. So for example, we used it here. Um, you know, in the title, let's just go double check. How did we set that up? Well, actually, let's put the specific dates in because otherwise it's going to say about a month from now to about a month from now or something like that. Something very non-specific. So we want to just go date. There we go. Anywhere else I've used that, I probably need to fix it as well. Um, but just something to keep in mind. You've got all these different options, but by default, it's always relative, um, which always surprises me. I think date itself should be the default, but... Um, I will submit that to ideas.adalo.com in some of the time. Um, so there we go, we've got that set up. We'll maybe, maybe make that a wee bit bigger because it's the main, I guess, piece of information on this page. So we'll centre that, requested dates. Um, we could also do, uh, you know, a requested by. Um, and you could put in the users, oops, a current stay. Uh, we could get the guest and get their full name. Um, so we can say that's a request. We can put a little button in that's going to be confirm. So we can say uh, confirm stay. And we can have another one here that says, I've just copied and pasted that, dragged it down. Let's say, nope, cancel the stay. Let me change that color to green. Uh, sorry, not on there, but change it on here uh, to green. And uh, we'll do, I wonder if there's a big X or a big decline button somewhere. Uh, see if we can find the right icon for this. There we go, that'll do perfect. So we've got confirm stay and we'll make that a check. And we've got say no. The other thing I should probably add in here, of course, just to help the host make their decision is if I go back to my installed components, look for the calendar slider. Uh, drag that down I'll make it a fair little bit smaller just so we can fit in the space uh, you could you can adjust this back and forth to get to the exact right size that you need but I think this will do that should roughly do um, we'll say what events should be displayed well of course we want to display stays but we want to filter them by uh, the current uh, stays, apartments, stays, because we don't want to show every stay ever, we just want to show the ones at this particular apartment. So we've got that filtered in there, and again we can just set up the same options that we used before uh, when we used this component. Beginning date, end date, mark it with a bar, don't run any action. Um, in theory you might want to run an action that like, then clicks on to like, book an approval for um, whatever event's in there, but anyway we'll leave that and we'll set of course the first day of the week to be Monday, you can change your language as well if you want, but I'll leave that alone for now. So we'll get cancel stay, we'll get confirm stay, pretty good. Um, and so what I'm going to do for the confirm stay, we're going to do a couple of things here that are pretty interesting. So first of all, obviously we're going to update the stay. So we just need to come in here and say, right, well, um, is confirmed is set to true, is declined is set to false, done and dusted. But we're going to add another action to notify the guest. So we're going to say the recipient is the current stay's guest. We're going to say the title is booking confirmed for 
power and then we could just put in the uh, the beginning date and again we've got to change that to be the right format so the date we can do that and we can say uh, good news and this will pop up on their phone as a notification good news your booking has been confirmed for and we'll just again use this date this can be a little bit tedious because i'm obviously showing you it in a video but when you're taking your time building this out you know it's not it's not nearly as painful as it seems watching somebody else do it um so we'll kind of say right okay boom that date to that date and there we go and you can pick kind of like what screen should that relate to etc i'm just gonna put home page uh, make it nice and easy and so that's going to send a notification. Now there's one thing we have to remember to do. In order to trigger a notification, you have to ask permission on a phone. You know how when you go on a phone and it springs up and asks for it and it's just a total pain? It, pretty much every app you download, it asks first thing. Well, unfortunately, your app's going to have to do that as well. So I'll come in here to my guest homepage. I'm going to add another action. Oh, there you go. It's already put it in. Request notification. So that must happen by default then. Um, when I enable trigger notification. So now when the user logs in for the first time, it's going to ask them for that permission. Remember, it won't do it on preview mode because you're not on an actual phone. It will do it when you actually uh, use your app on iPhone or Android. So don't worry if you don't see that popping up. It is happening. It just doesn't always show up on a uh, preview mode. So move these here. Uh, I just need to make sure these are aligned. And... Uh, the only other thing we've got to do is finish off this cancel button. And what we can just do, uh, again, you could say trigger a notification, just say to the same person, guest, sorry, no booking for you. Unfortunately, uh, the host has chosen not to let you come, to let you come on your trip starting that's a bit of a gotten a uh, notification to receive hopefully you'll make something slightly nicer but <laughs> but there you go that's what I'm going to um, send to them so we'll say that's a notification and then of course we've got to actually cancel it off which involves updating the current stay to be declined. Now you could delete the current stay if you really wanted to, but it's always useful to have these things so you can keep them in a list. So we say as declined, sorry, should be true. Um, as confirmed, as false. We'll hit done on that one. And there we go. And of course, both of these are probably going to want to link you back to the uh, to the My Bookings page, if I can find that. Where is it? There we go. Uh, you probably want to link back on both of these. Just save you a little bit of time and one other thing i think is worth doing you know you can leave this page here so people can always come in and see uh, when each trip's happening so if you wanted to do that and you wanted to take away the ability to to sort of have to you know confirm it over and over again you could just say here you know this component will only be visible if um current state is confirmed equals false so you know you could only have that shown up if it's set to false otherwise um, it will always show and again you could do a similar thing with that button but now you've got the ability the user can come in they can book a stay and we can go and we can um, confirm or deny that stay so similarly then on the guest side of the house we're going to need a way to see you know can I stay in my place yet? Is it, is it kind of confirmed, etc? you know we've built the host side of it but we now need to build the guest side of it so I'm going to hit a new screen I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cre uh, create sorry, a list by status. Uh, I'm going to give the screen a name of my stays. Slightly different, just a little bit more personalised for the uh, user. Again, of course, it's going to ping it all the way over here. Now, you could leave it here. I'm going to drag it up just so you can kind of see it away from the crowd. Oh, slightly. So I'm going to put my stays right up here. And if we scroll in on this, ever so slightly then what we can do is just change us up so the top one is going to be um a upcoming stays so all your exciting stuff that you've got coming down the line and of course we're then going to have pending stays now um 
I'm going to delete both of these lists and what I'm actually just going to do is copy and paste the one from the host again. This is just a wee time saving trick, you don't have to do it. Copy, paste. I might edit it slightly, but I'm just going to drag it up. Uh, oops, hold on a wee second, I need to zoom myself out so I can get up there. Hard work. Right. Sorry, there we go. I'll just drag that again. Again, this is much easier if you've got a mouse. I've just done myself the displeasure of using a MacBook with a trackpad. It does make life that little bit harder. So there we go, got that there. And then we can just, uh, uh, we'll just change the text and stuff on here slightly. So this is gonna be a list of stays. Um, it's gonna be um, a logged in users list of uh, stays where they're a guest. Um, and it's gonna be ones where declined is false. Or sorry, it's gonna be ones where confirmed is true. So these are all the upcoming, confirmed, brilliant, good to go stays. I'm going to change this slightly because we don't want to see our own picture or nor do we need to see requested stay anymore. So I'm just going to put, I'll put for example the city name in here just to give it a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of a, a kind of interesting look. We'll do the apartment city. So that's going to show the apartment city, stay beginning date, stay end date. Um, I can minimise that, make sure that's going to be two lines. For the subtitle, uh, of course, I'll do the apartment name still. And then for the left section, I'm going to change this up a bit. So instead of doing uh, the avatar, I'm going to call this, um, make this an image, which squares it out a little bit. And then that is going to be the database's apartment's main image. And so that will pull in nicely. And then what I can do, copy that, paste that as we're used to, drag it right down here. I'm going to take this little um, a button, action button, delete it. I'm going to have my back button up here by putting the left icon on. Uh, and so this will be my pending stays. And these will just be the ones uh, where as confirmed is set to false. Again, you can make another one for declined uh, stays, etc. I'm not going to bother. Um, you know, that's one you can feel free to, to kind of add on yourself. There you go, I've got upcoming, oops, I've got upcoming stays, pending stays. And then we have to kind of decide, well, what's going to happen uh, when we click these? Now, you could have it as nothing, you could have it go to the, the apartment um, details. Um, and, you know, there's all, I guess, I guess all sorts of variety of uh, things that you could do here. But one of the interesting things that we're going to do is I'm going to create another tab really really similar to this in fact i'm just going to copy and paste this screen because it's so similar so i'm going to copy that i'm going to paste it of course it's going to ping right over here i'm going to pull it back over except instead of this one being called my stays number two i'm going to call it history and this is going to be the history of um all of my previous stays so i'm just going to call that literally just previous stays. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that. Uh, in terms of how you get here, let's just make a quick link. Uh, so the third tab, history, is of course, you guessed it, going to link to history. Really nice and simple. And what I'm going to have here is when you click on an apartment here, it's going to take you to a review screen. And by the way, you could you could change the text um, uh, up a little bit here so you could say like the subtitle instead of the apartment name you could say you stayed here and then what you could do is oh sorry i'm clicking all sorts of dumb things here you come here you could hit this little text button you could say the end date but you could leave that this time in the relative state which means it's going to show you you know you stayed here 10 days ago one month ago etc just a quick, again, a little way of just changing up your design, making sure it looks good with data, um, etc. But obviously back here, we've still got the dates set um, in a date format. So what I'm going to do here uh, under my stays is when I click on a particular um, a item, it's going to take me to a new screen called Leave a Review. Let me pop that in there. And I'm going to drag that right over. And this is what's going to let me leave different reviews on different 
apartments. So whichever one I click into, it's going to know what the apartment is. And then I can pull some text in here just to start personalizing the page a little bit. So we can say, right, uh, you stayed here. And Airbnb have got very, very similar screens. I don't know what they look like off the top of my head, but you know, it's the, this is the kind of thing that they do on there as well to make it look good. So we'll do a beginning date, we'll do a two, end date. In terms of format, um, we can just do, we'll just do the date. You do a couple of things in there, but we'll just do the date. Uh, there we go. So you can kind of say, oh, and let's just format that. We'll do 22, my favorite size, center it. So you can say you stayed here for, you know, from this time. Let's put our star rating in. So we want to know what they rated it. So you get a star rate. Uh, we'll also do a wee text box for them to leave a comment. Um, so we'll do our text input. Drag that down here. And of course we need a button to submit the review. So we do submit review. I wonder if you got a little star icon you could put in there, make it a bit easier. Yeah, there we go. So do submit review. And uh, a couple of other wee things we'll do just to style this here. Um, you know, we can just do rating. We can even do it just to be more specific to our user, choose rating. Now, a lot of these things that I'm adding in might seem a little bit tedious. I know, uh, you know, watching it uh, might seem tedious, but I'm always trying to think about what does the user experience look like? You know, if it says rating, given they've been on a page before where they weren't able to set a rating, is it going to be obvious that the rating is clickable? Not necessarily. You might think so, but quite often we make assumptions that are not true um, for our users. So I'll do your comment there. End text, I mean, again, it's not the most beautiful, um, a, you know, box, essentially. I don't know, it's a bit big, do 14 rounding. So it's not the most beautiful box, but gets the job done. Uh, instead of enter text, we just write something else. Um, what did you think of this apartment? Let's just do something like that. Do it a little bit wider. And there you go. So we've got our rating there. Now I want to show you something pretty interesting. You remember at the very, very start when we did the database, which seems like such a long time ago now, when we did the database, we added in this extra bit to the users uh, called temporary rating variable. Well, now you're going to get to find out what that means. So what I want to do here, right, is I want to create a new review. So when I come in add action with my button, I'm going to go ahead and create a review. But let me show you the problem. When I go to put in the rating, I do not have that uh, that star rating as an input. The only input I've got is my comment box. I don't have the star rating available. So I'm not able to save it directly there. However, the star rating itself can take a rating. If I set that to yes, and it says, what property does this set? Well, now I can set the temporary rating variable. So I can now, I can't store my rating directly uh, in the review, but what I can do is store it here. And then when I do the review, what I can do is, where do I get that rating? Well, I come in here, hit formula, I go to the logged in user and I take their temporary rating variable because by the time this button's clicked, the rating here is already set. Now I can set a couple of colors there just to make it look good, etc. I don't want to put a click action in this because that already happens when the user clicks by default. I do not need to do anything else. Um, I've obviously got the input. I'll just change that name to, a, I'll call it comment input actually. Keep that nice and saved. And so when I go to do this, all that's going to happen is I need to create a rating, so I'll just do, um, uh, we'll just do current stay ID hyphen uh, review. Um, and apologies, I'll try and edit out that noise uh, that you can hear in the background, but I live in a park and uh, we're currently mowing the park. Uh, so we'll see the guest is a logged in user, we'll see the stay as of course the, um, the current stay. Oh wait a minute, why is it not letting me do that? See if I can narrow it down this way. Can it stay? Oh, let me come back to that in a wee second. Um, for the review comment, we're just going to um, put in the inputs. Comment input. 
So it's not letting me pick up the stay there. What I can actually do um, is I can switch that over to apartment because to be honest, as long as I've got the apartment, I don't really need uh, to know what the stay is. So let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, if I go to reviews um, and I'm going to take out stay this time, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to add a property. And uh, I can add an apartments. And I can say uh, an apartment can be multiple reviews, review the loans to one apartment, of course. That's going to be the best way to do it. Um, I put apartment. And uh, if I come back here, now that I've set that up, it should let me pick the current apartment. We'll just see. So current stay, grab the apartment. There we go. So that works nice and easy as we expect. So we can stay ID review, we've saved all that, yada, yada, yada. Everything's in there. And then the one thing I just want to do as well is go back and empty out that variable that I set. So the logged in user, I'm going to go find that temporary waiting variable. I'm going to change that to zero. But of course, the, the review happens first in this sequence and therefore that will all be sorted out. So the last thing then just to do is, of course, just take us back. And the other thing you could do, uh, clearly this is a link. So if the user has already left a review, now I've got to delete that booking approval, sorry, that was a good spot. If the user has already left um, a review, then what I can do is uh, I can just specify, look, don't let them in. So you could go in there, you could do a look, when does this happen and kind of sort that out. Um, just the thing that I pointed out there, um, obviously I copied and pasted this list from the host, so you always got to just watch that because What's happened there is it's trying to link me to the booking approval and all of these lists. That's because I forgot to delete that action. So just a good wee spot there. It's amazing how much uh, uh, debugging you do <laughs> when you're uh, playing around with this stuff. If I had left that in, the user would be able to approve their very own booking. So that is not what we want in the slightest. So now they're able to um, essentially create a review, come back a page. And then the last thing that we want to do on this it's just simply where we go into apartment details and we can see the review or, or we can see the total rating. What we now want to do is come and create a new screen to actually just review the reviews. So we just do reviews and actually I'll just pick a really basic list template. I'm not too fussed about how this all looks. So I'll just do a simple list, create a screen. That will end up over here, which is not too bad actually. I won't have to drag it too far. I'll do this here. Of course, we need to enable our back button in the top component. We want to be able to go back. And uh, we can just say this is a list of reviews. And we can say this is a list of reviews where the apartment equals the current apartment. And for the review, uh, we'll just put, for the title, we'll just put the actual review comment. So we'll delete that. We'll specify the review comment for the subtitle. We'll put the rating, oops, so we can do a rating out of five. And that will save that. And then you can just change your left section image. So you can just change that. You make that the, uh, the current reviewers guess profile photo. And so that will set up your reviews. You just, you don't really want to, um, make too much out of that section. It's nice and, and, and sort of pretty simple. And so the last thing that we want to do here is um, clearly we've got this apartment rating and you've kind of got a couple of options here, but what we could do on the submit review here is we could add a wee extra. We could say, um, go and uh, uh, we could say update the current apartment and we could say the rating should be you know, uh, the current apartments, current stays, rating. You could say that should be the current rating plus whatever we said the rating was here, which I believe was a logged in user's temporary rating. So we can do that and we can set that. And we need to make sure, by the way, that we do that before we update the user to delete that. So that's now going to add a constant rating to um, this. And then what we can do here, where we've said apartment rating, I believe we can come and do an average uh, so we can come and find the rating and I believe I've got the ability to come in. No, I can't make that average. Um, 
so we can just put the rating in. That will show the total rating that we've got there. And uh, let me see if I can make it an average on here. Might be able to do that. I'm sure there's a way to do this. Maybe if we come in and uh, da, 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 definitely a way you can do it. Oh, I'm not 100% sure. I'll update that in the comment section below around about how you can add uh, the specific rating in there. There is a way to average it. Uh, in fact, I'll just do a quick pause and then I'll show you. And of course, just figured it out. I was being really stupid. Uh, I knew I knew how to do this because I obviously did it on the last one. Uh, what you do is you come in here uh, to your star rating of the apartment. You do reviews, you do uh, rating, and then you can average out the rating of across all of the reviews. Really, really cool feature actually. It's really, really powerful some of the stuff you can do in there because you can filter it as well and do all sorts of stuff. But yeah, essentially um, all this kind of extra step I added there, I don't really need. Uh, I don't really need to update the apartment's uh, rating. We don't really need that field in the first place actually. Um, so what I can just do is once I've added a review, obviously this will come in and it will take the average of all the ratings. So sorted there and then. So there we go, we've just added the ability to confirm and deny bookings. We've obviously added the ability to navigate the bookings that the guest has got. And we've added the ability to do reviews. In a nutshell, that is more or less the entirety of Airbnb. I'm going to show you in one more video how you can add a map search because I know how key that is. I'll also just tidy off the user's profile picture as well.